Let's go, buddy. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Crafting Journey here, that journey chick over on Instagram. And the leftovers on my new channel. Look at that down in the description. There's a link. It'll take you to the channel if you wouldn't mind subscribing and hitting the like button over there. The like button here would be very jealous, but, you know, he'll get over it. So, so in, in all fairness, you should probably hit the like button on this video as well. It does help the new YouTube algorithm. Also, consider subscribing and sharing this video with someone you might think would enjoy the content while they do some crafting. I talk about what's happening in live trials. So right now, we the only live trial is the Nicholas Cruz case, but we'll get to that in a little while. <laughs> do I look like I'm enthusiastic about that? Not so much. Okay. And don't forget, most importantly, hit all on the notifications so you don't miss a single episode of Crafting and Crime Daily. My first day of fun employment. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, so I'm a little goofy. If you, you know, if you want something scripted and, you know, edited, that's not this channel. <laughs> this is a channel where I talk about, you know, blog about my life and I also recap live trials. So, Yesterday was an interesting day. <laughs> um, a little emotional towards the end. The medical staff actually paid for me to have lunch. Like they let us close the office for two hours and they all took me to lunch. Paid for by the medical staff. I didn't know they knew I existed. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, there's some I'm, I was friends with. Uh, yeah. So we decided, I, did, I decided I wanted to go to Old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room. Oh my God. Amazing food there. Amazing food. And really nice conversation. It was just a great way to spend the afternoon because I was not going to do one single bit of work yesterday and I didn't. Um, then uh, one of the girls brought in a big tray of cookies, all these different kinds of cookies. She didn't bake them, of course. I gotta get my coffee. But they were delicious, wherever she got them. So, last night, you know, I have an appointment today with the arm doctor. And, I don't know. Show of hands, should I go? Should I not go? Last night, I thought, let me do some crochet, see if it's bothering me. And really, here's what I did last night. I did all this. It's a, it's a bag a day pattern. And uh, super simple, yeah. And it doesn't seem to, it's like just a twinge. So I think maybe if I just don't overdo it, it'll be all right. This is a beautiful, um, let me get the yarn out. I'll show you which, which yarn this is. This is uh, Red Heart Soft Essentials. It's a five weight. It's in the color of Misty Rose. So that is the, this is the colorway that I'm using. And there's enough here uh, where I think I'll finish the scarf and I'll do the hat, the matching hat that goes with it. Yeah. Now for the scarf, you use a, a larger uh, crochet hook. And then for the hat, I'm going to go down a few sizes on probably the same pattern, but go down a few sizes on the hook. I love five weight. I really do. Anyway, I can sit and do that today while I chit chat. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see if I got, I got to remember where I left off last night. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yep. Chain one, turn your work. Yep. So there was a question yesterday about the new diamond painting release papers that Crashly, Crafts with Crashly is selling. If you want to see that video from yesterday, I unbagged a bunch of her release papers. You, you got to see them. Oh my God, they're amazing. But I know you guys watch these videos in order, so you've probably already seen them. But Someone asked, how do you use them? That's a really good question. So I'll get out the... I'm going to 
to get out the event papers since, you know, we're having the event. The Great Escape. Now, traditionally, when you order a release paper off of Amazon, both sides, you could use either side. But in this case, these are made so that one side can be printed. So it's, this is not going to work. You don't want to put that face down. You want to make sure that the white side is face down on your canvas. So what I do when I'm preparing to start a new canvas, I take, I clear everything off my desk, take the plastic off, and then I just start lining them up. And you just put it down. You just place it right down on top of the poured glue and you line it up. You can go this way, you can go this way, whatever you want. And then you just take them off one at a time and do that section. And then you can, and then you put it back in the envelope, save it for the next time. And then you move on to the next section. So I hope, I hope that was helped whoever asked that question. So back to my work here is never done. Oh my. So today, what else happened at work? Okay, so that, I turned my, I was, I put two little cookies on a plate, and I, at 3.30, I went over to my boss, turned, gave her the cookies, turned in my computer, my keys, my badge, you know, all that, and uh, forgot to give her the uh, cord to the computer. <laughs> But she says, do you, use, do you have a cord or does this use a docking station? Oh, no, it uses the docking station, which is why I forgot the cord, because it really does use a docking station. I never used a cord with that laptop. I just would plug it into the docking station, and that would um, keep the battery going. But I made sure that all my emails were deleted before I left. I used to save emails in particular folders so I could refer back to some of them later in different categories, but I deleted them all. I made sure there was nothing that, you know, the company needed to know that I needed to put in the share drive, but yeah. Then I had a little conversation with the lawyer and I ended up signing the agreement. Yeah. Yep. They they just were digging in their heels. They were not going to acknowledge that, you know, they didn't give two hoots whether I had a claim or not. They're like, sue us. But then I wouldn't get any severance, and I need the severance to start my new job. So, you know, my fun employment job. Oh, well, you know, it was it was a try. And the attorney did say that he would write off most of his bill, which I think is really sweet of him. Because, um, you know, he, he didn't want to put me in a worse position than I was before I got there. So, yeah. Anyway. So I had some mixed feelings about leaving. You know, I was sad about, you know, this is my last job. I'm not going to take another job. I say that now. Remind me I said that. I, I, I'm i going to make this my business work. Yep. I have been doing a lot of studying on this business. What to buy, what not to buy, what sells, what doesn't sell. So it's going to work. <laughs> and if you want to get a preview of that business, look over on my leftover channel. I will be doing live auctions on that channel. As um, soon as I get a bit more of an audience, um, I've gotten 111 subscribers in the first month. It's only been up a month, that channel. So it's doing pretty well. So let's talk about Crafting and Crime Daily. The Nicholas Cruz case is still going on. Now, I tuned in to see what was happening in the morning, and they had that same lady on the stand, the one with the oxygen drool. She's appearing on videotape, and it was the prosecution's chance to examine her. 
And he says, I'm not going to go through everything again. But then he starts to go through everything again. I'm like, no, no, we heard it all. I just want to clarify a few things. No, we don't need it clarified, really, honest to God. And he's talking about when they first moved to Broward County. They lived in Weston and they built their own house and blah, blah, blah. And it had a pool. And it, like this kid, this he was in a pretty... I'm not going to say rich, but a well-off family. You know, he was a, maybe he had a rough start and maybe this was the point of the prosecution's examination. Yes, he had a rough start in life, but this kid had every advantage with his adopted family. Oh my God. Swing sets, pools, jacuzzis, trampolines, you know. And I live in Broward County. Weston is a nice, nice area. And then they sold their house in Weston, which they built. They moved down there, built the home. They owned it outright. Then I guess they decided to split. They, his father and mother, adoptive father and mother, Linda and Richard, I think his name is. And they moved to Parkland. Now, Parkland, that was like Weston and Parkland. That's where all the rich people, doctors, lawyers, that's where they all lived. Parkland and Weston. So this kid did not come out of like an impoverished, you know, cocaine prostitute mother. He, yeah, he did. But she gave him up to this rich family. I mean, wow. And you know what? He still committed murder. Yes. So needless to say, I decided... I'm going to do some research and I figured out what the next trial is. George Wagner IV is on trial right now. They are picking a jury. This is a case out of Pike County, Ohio. We're going back to Ohio. <laughs> the stage suicide case was in Ohio. And if you remember a few months ago, I covered the, the doctor that was accused of murdering his patients that was in Ohio, so we're we're gonna stay in Ohio for a while here. Turn your work. I gotta make sure I'm doing this. It looks funky. What happened here? This looks funky. I think it always does until you start. Okay, let's just keep going. <laughs> I'm going to do a few stitches and see if it still looks funky. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So, George Wagner IV is on trial for 22 counts of murder, attempted murder, and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to tell you the story of these two families, the Wagner families and the Roden family. Now, the Roden families were the victims. There were eight people in this Roden family that were murdered by the Wagner family. They were fighting over the custody of a two and a half year old. Now, George's father was a senior, George Sr., but they called him Billy. He was 51 years old, married to Angela, 51 years old, and he had his brother, Jake, his younger brother, Jake, who was the father of this two and a half year old. Jake is 29 years old. Now, all three of these guys, Billy, Angela, and Jake are all in jail. I'll tell you about that later. They were all charged in this murder scheme. The Wagner family, they were very, they were a very insular family family. This is the prosecution's words. They were an insular family. They lived on this 71 acre farm in Pike. It wasn't a farm. 71 acres out in Pike County. Not a farm. I always think of if you've got that much land, it's a farm. <laughs> but, all right. So they lived on 71 acres out in Pike County, all in the same house. They, they co-mingled their money. They made decisions together. They would have family meetings. They would vote they were homeschooled. So this was just a very, very close knit family. Now, both George and Jack had been married and divorced. And I'll tell you what their ex-wives are going to say later on. Jake had a child with his ex-wife and she gave that boy up to Jake 
I'll tell you why. This family would resort to violence if they didn't get what they wanted. So these two ex-wives actually fled the one of them leaving her son, giving up custody of her son, and just in fear of their lives, they just left. So we may hear testimony from those two wives. So four months before this, the murders happen, the Wagner family votes to carry out the murders. And then they spent the next four months planning it. Angela would go on social media and hack into their social media accounts, the rodents' social media accounts. Angela also went out and bought both of her son's athletic shoes to wear on the night of the murders. George Sr., Billy, went out and bought a truck specifically to commit these murders so they wouldn't be identified coming and going. Jake and George actually hid in this truck as George, uh, Billy, the father, pulls up to the to Chris Roden, who's the senior member of this family, the father, patriarch of the family, he pulls up to that house. Now, I will tell you that the Wagners were into a lot of other crimes, drug dealing, arson, theft. This was not a good family. So he was going to offer Chris Roden in on a lucrative drug deal. Now, I don't know if he was like scoping out the place. I guess we're going to hear more about this encounter later. But this was the day of the murders that he pulled up in his truck and then Jake and George were hiding in the truck. And then Jake bought a silencer and parts to put together silencers. So there were silencers on all the guns. That way no one could hear what happened that night. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the Roden family. Now, 44-year-old Chris Roden Sr., Christopher Roden Sr., he worked as a laborer at this Big Bear Lake Resort. He lived in a trailer on their property. Now, all these Rodens, even though they were, you know, they were all living on this same road in different trailers on this road called Union Pike Road. I'm sorry, Union Hill Road. <laughs> so he lived in this trailer with his cousin, Gary, and allegedly he was trying to help Gary get over his drug and alcohol addiction. Gary Roden was 38 years old, so this was his younger brother, and they were described as best friends. The night of the murders, Christopher is shot nine times in the head, and there appeared to have been some kind of struggle. Gary was shot three times in the head. Now, all of the victims of these murders allegedly were shot in their sleep. But although it appears like Chris woke up during uh, the shooting. Then we have Christopher's ex-wife, Dana. She's 37 years old. She's living in a different trailer, same road, all within the vicinity, like a mile and a half of each other. Dana lives with her two children one of whom is a teenager, 16-year-old Chris Jr., and 19-year-old Hannah. Now, Hannah was the mother of this two-and-a-half-year-old. Now, I don't know where this two-and-a-half-year-old was the night of these murders. I think, I'm pretty sure she was home with Angela Wagner. Angela did not take part in the shootings. It was George, Billy, the father, George Jr. and Jake. Those three did the shootings. Angela was helping in the planning, but I think she was home watching the two and a half year old. So that night, they go into the trailer of Dana. She was shot five times in the head. The 16 year old Christopher Jr. He was a freshman at Piketon High School he had recently obtained his driver's license. He was shot four times, twice in the head. Then the mom, who was in bed with her five-year-old from a different guy, 19 years old, two kids. 
So she was in bed with her five-year-old, who was unharmed. But Hannah, who was just getting ready to graduate from high school, she worked as a nursing assistant, as did her mother, Dana, 38. They both worked as nursing assistants in the local nursing home, which is now closed. She was shot two times in the face. Now, when you shoot somebody in the face, that's personal. That's like really personal. These, all these gunshots, all these head wounds were at close range. Like they just went up, you know. But her daughter, like I said, was unharmed. All the children, the, the young children that were at these homes were unharmed. So now we're up to five victims. Then they go to another trailer. where Clarence is living. Clarence is Christopher's oldest son. So Christopher, the patriarch, has three kids. Clarence, the two kids that were living with their mother, Dana. Now they're already dead. Then we have Clarence, who's living on his own in, in his trailer with his fiance, also named Hannah. Clarence was known as Frankie. He had two young boys. He worked at the local sawmill. He was an avid fisherman and demolition derby driver. Now, the three of them were found in the bed. Him, his girlfriend, fiance, Hannah Gilly, and their six-month-old infant son, who was unharmed. But Clarence had been shot in the head twice. Hannah had been shot in the head five times. Now, his three-year-old son, born from a different mother, was in another room, also unharmed. The last victim was Kenneth. This was Christopher's, Christopher's brother. He was 44 years old. He lived in a camper on a different road. He wasn't on this uh, Union Hill Road, but he was um, only about a mile away, and he lived in his camper. He was a motorcycle enthusiast. He would wake up every day at 4 a.m. and travel to Columbus, Ohio, where he worked at a utility company. He was found shot in his right eye. So we have eight victims, an entire family, wiped out over the custody of this two and a half year old girl. All planned by the Wagner family, who were all charged. So let me tell you what happened with those charges. George Sr., his charges are still pending. Now, why they split these trials up, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But Angela, the mother, the murder charges were dropped on her and she pled guilty to 14 lesser charges, and she was sentenced to 30 years in prison, which means she'll be eligible to get out of prison someday. Jake, the brother, the father of this two-and-a-half-year-old, he also pled guilty and was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences, but he was spared the death penalty, which by the way, I might add, is lethal injection, which apparently in Ohio, there's a shortage of lethal injection drugs. So they have a moratorium on the death penalty right now until they can find out, find another way to do it. Where is everybody else getting their lethal injection drugs? I don't even know what they administer. But anyway, apparently there's a shortage of it. So Jake has said that George, my brother George, who's on trial, this is George's trial, which is going to be separate from George Sr.'s trial, which is supposed to be in October, but probably will not really happen until next year. So George Jr.'s trial is in jury selection in this county, Pike County, in this old Civil War courthouse where they are trying to get 12 jurors that aren't that don't know this family and that don't know anything about this horrendous murder of eight family members. How would you not know about that? So there's less than 30,000 people that live in this county. 20% of those 30,000 people live in poverty and they expect they're not even going to respond to the jury notice. So it will probably, they've been in jury selection. This is today will be the third day. 
they ask, the prosecution asked to move the trial or the defense asked to move the trial. Uh, one of them did. And the judge denied it. The judge in this case is Randy Deering. And he said, no, we're not moving the trial. Good luck. Now, I might add that Jake also had a charge of unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. Now, I don't know if that was the mother of this two and a half year old, if that's the, if that's what they're referring to. I have no idea. But anyway, he's in jail, never going to get out. Angela's in jail. She'll probably get out. George Sr. waiting, Billy, he's waiting for his trial. And now we're going to have the trial of George Jr. <sighs> who Jake said didn't commit any of these murders. He was just there to help out. Apparently he just came along because they thought that George Sr. might turn the gun on Jake. And after everybody was killed, killed Jake as well. So George was there to prevent that. Not sure I'm buying that, but uh, okay. So interesting trial, right? I do have some community posts up. Check those out. I'm trying to do a community post every day. So look forward to that. Um, I'm also doing shorts every day, trying to get people attracted to the channel through the new algorithm that, that looks at shorts and community posts. So that's why you're seeing those. But look, pretty scarf, isn't it? I'm I'm gonna make it quite a bit longer. I, I need I need some length because I'm a big shouldered woman, but that's gonna be very pretty. I love this pink. It's like a peachy pink. Let's find out what happened this day in history, shall we? Also, don't forget tonight is Craft With Me Wednesday. I am going to be using some India inks with my watercolor. So you're not going to want to miss that. I, ha I haven't, I've played around with them, but I haven't really done any kind of paintings with them. So I've looked at some YouTube videos, like I think I can do it, but tune in. Let's see if I can pull it off. So on this day in history, back in 1997, the most famous public figure in the world, the People's Princess, dies in a car crash. I remember I was sitting in my bed watching television. I had a live-in boyfriend back then. We won't talk about him. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> so he was out in the other room playing on his computer, playing video games, talking to his girlfriends, you know, a whole other story. But I remember I was laying in bed and, and I said, oh my God, what? And I ran out and I said, oh my God, Princess Diana was just killed in a car crash. So she was with her Egyptian boyfriend, Dodi Fayed, and their driver, Henry Paul. They were being chased by the paparazzi. They go through this, they go into this tunnel and there's a crash. So they were in Paris. They had just left this hotel where Dodi Fayed had an apartment. They were headed into this tunnel when the driver lost control. They were being chased by a bunch of paparazzis on motorcycles. The driver loses control of the vehicle and he hits a pillar that's at the entrance to this tunnel. Uh, the driver and Dodi were declared dead at the scene. Princess Diana was taken to the hospital and declared dead at 6 a.m. that morning after efforts to save her life were in vain. There was a fourth passenger, Trevor Reese Jones, who was the bodyguard for Princess Diana. He was injured in the crash, but he did survive. So there was a formal investigation that concluded that the driver was the cause of the crash. He was under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and that the paparazzi were not the cause of this accident. Prince William at the time was 15, and Prince Harry was 12. That's 15 and 12, and they lost their mom. Oh, my God. All right, so we all remember that. And it, the whole funeral, you know, her body was flown back to London. The whole thing was like this huge media sensation. Everybody watched, of course, you know. Oh, okay. That's this day in history, and that is the show for today. Don't forget to watch 6 p.m. tonight, Craft With Me Wednesday, where I'm going to play with my India inks and watercolors, and we can chit-chat, catch up. You can see how I'm doing being fun employed on my first day, and I love you all. Take care.